Well, good morning. Uh, today is December 15th, 2020, and we're so happy to have all the paths to project students here. Um, we're joined today by DHR Health, and we're at the Dove Imaging Center, and we're going to talk about radiology. Um, I want to remind everyone participating that this is being recorded. We um, have uh, disabled the chat and unmuting feature now, but we'll open it up for questions in just a little bit. So I want to welcome all the students and all the educators and introduce you to Victoria Gonzalez. Hi, Victoria. So good morning. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm well. Good. Um, she's going to talk to us today about radiology. So I'll turn this over to Victoria. Hello, good morning. My name is Victoria Gonzalez. I am the radiology technologist supervisor for the Imaging Center at Dove. I've been in this field for about six years. I've been a radiology tech for four years and I'm a supervisor for two years. Uh, so what I did is I attended a program at South Texas College. It's a two year program. I graduated in 2014. And two years after that, I did uh, my bachelor's program there at SCC as a medical management, uh, which led me to this position as a supervisor. Um, I would take advantage of the programs available uh, that are provided for me paying the tuitions. Uh, for example, I was in a program called Hazelwood. Um, what it did is my, my father is a Marine veteran. So what we did is we used that program to pay off the tuition. It helped me uh, buy books and so forth. Uh, so it didn't leave me in any debt. It didn't give me any loans, so I would very much take advantage of all those opportunities that are available uh, at the STC program. Um, I chose this field because um, what we do is we diagnose and treat illnesses and injuries for the patients by taking x-rays, doing fluoroscopy, and also um, I am learning CAT scan, I'm in the beginning of learning CAT scan, um, there is different modalities that you can grow to CAT scan, MRI, uh, special procedures, nuclear medicine, ultrasound. There's many, many modalities that help you grow. Uh, not only are we proficient in x-rays, but we do fluoroscopy exams like upper GIs, myelograms, arthrograms. There's different types of procedures that we can perform. I can show you a procedure which is called an upper GI. Uh, this is Matthew. He is my radiology technologist here at the Imaging Center at Duff. Hello. I will show you an example of how we do the upper GIs. So what I'm going to do here, this is our machine. This is our bed. I'm going to lay him down. He is my patient. I'm going to have him lay down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this machine works. So we're going to raise up the bed. So what it does is his feet are on the platform. We're going to go raise up the bed. And what we do is we give the patient a liquid to drink. We give them a liquid called barium. So under x-rays, we're able to see that contrast going into their stomach, into their intestines. So here we go, here is our night of view. That's where the x-rays will be taken. We can dim the night of view with these buttons right here. There is a laser that'll show us where we'll be positioning the patient. We give them the liquid to drink. X-rays go down, the images go down into the esophagus, into the stomach. We do move the patient different ways. We can move the patient this way, and we can turn them towards the other side to get different views of the images of the patient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lay him back down. We also can use this machine as an x-ray machine. So now I'm in a lay position where I can take an x-ray. This is also an x-ray tube for regular x-rays. But for example, we can do an abdomen x-ray. I'm going to open up the field to the x-ray to the abdomen. 
uh, what we do is for x-rays of the abdomen, we fill it for the crest. We're gonna lightly fill for the crest here. And this is where the right of fills are going. We're gonna take it a lower and we will take an upper. We also do x-rays of the chest, which is another common exam where he'll be putting his chest against this plate, right here. This is an x-ray mistake too. So what we do is we do the same exact thing. This is the field of light. It also has a laser. And we bring it to his chest. Right here, the image will be on this image receptor and it'll give us a chest x-ray image. What we need to do, we just position him by bringing his shoulders forward, moving the scapula out of the way of the lung fields. We also use a device called a shield. What it does, it protects the patient uh, from having radiation to this area, right here. So that'll be a shield. This is the light of view. This is where the markings at, where you should be, be positioning the patient. And that will be an x-ray and it'll be an x-ray. It'll come out exactly like this right here. What we also can perform is we can perform extremities on this machine. Let me show you a hand x-ray. So what we can do is we can move this machine down right over here. It has different functions. So now we have turned our machine into a machine for extremities. We also have a light of view of the patient and make sure you always shield the patient of childbearing age. Now let me show you the other exam that we have, which is fluoroscopy, right this way. Right here in the control room. This is where we step out to take x-rays. This is how we can see the x-ray and we can adjust it as much as we need. This is where we control the x-ray from our console. This button right here is where we actually take the x-ray. Right here, we hold that button down. And let me show you the upper GI. So this is where the patient was standing, where I had Matthew standing. This is a contrast. It is white under x-ray. We see how it goes down the esophagus into the stomach. This is another view where the contrast is going into the stomach, entering it, as well as here down the esophagus. And this is the stomach. This is a contrast coating the stomach with the x-ray and that contrast and it's going into your intestine. This is another view of the stomach. And this is called a myelogram. This is where we place a needle into a patient's back. What we do is put local anesthesia onto the patient's back and we look for an entry of where we should bring, uh, be putting the needle. So for example, the doctor decided to place a needle right here. Local anesthesia is injected, and then we inject contrast, which is Omni. This is iodine. The contrast coats the spine right over here, and you see it's coating the spine. Then they are taken to CAT scan to be performed other uh, x-rays. This is a side view of it, so we have to do different views to make sure that that liquid is in the spinal cord. This exam is called an arthrogram. It's almost the same thing, 
what they do is they put local anesthesia into the joint space that's needed, which is they decided to go right here. They inject local anesthesia, numb the area, then also inject contrast. After that, they take a few images to make sure it's coding in the joint space, and they take them to CAT scan or MRI to be scanned. So we interact with different types of departments, whether it be doctors, nurses, RTs, pharmacy techs, uh, for example. In the ICU, we interact with respiratory therapists because we go take their x-rays with the portable machine that we have provided in the hospital, take the x-ray of a patient that just got intubated. After they've been intubated, the respiratory therapist would like to know the area of the tube that they have uh, to breathe, making sure they need to pull it out or pull it a little bit deeper. Um, I think you should have great multitasking skills, good, great communication, get good grades in high school, take advantage of the prerequisites that are available for the program so that you're able to succeed and get done with the program faster. Uh, there's also different departments also that would like to help, uh, have us help in there with uh, surgery. For example, fluoroscopy is needed to help position a hit for a floral exam and to make sure that the surgery is good. Um, ER, car accidents, um, there's car accidents, there's traumas, patients falling. We need to do those x-rays to make sure they don't have broken bones, to make sure that they're able to take off the collar that they place. We have to do some x-rays of their spine, make sure that everything's in place. Um, and again, like ICU, once they intubate a patient to help them breathe, we need to make sure that the position of the tube is in place. If you're interested in this program, study hard, learn anatomy, get pre out of the way, and you will be successful. Do you have any questions? Yes, Ms. Gonzalez, thank you very much. That was very interesting to see all the machines and uh, how you can move them around to be full body, partial body, extremities, very exciting. Um, we do have a couple questions. The first one is, have you ever needed to take an x-ray of a COVID-19 patient? Correct, every day. Every day? Correct. And what, what part of the body are you uh, taking and what do you see? We usually take x-rays of their chest. We wanna make sure that the lungs have not gotten any worse from when they were diagnosed with COVID because of course they are learning that it affects the lungs and their breathing, they get shortness of breath. Uh, many patients also are intubated, so which is where there is a tube that helps them breathe. We need to make sure the position is there. Uh, we do wear either respiratory and, and uh, respiratory mask or an N95 to protect ourselves. We do wear an eye shield. Uh, to protect uh, any droplets going into our eyes. We do have a gown, we, we double glove. Um, we also make sure that we change between, change that between every patient, make sure we um, clean the machine, wipe the cassette between every patient. That's and then another we question. There's another question we have. So have the uh -huh. machines ever broken? How many? Have the machines ever broken? Oh, the machines, yes, they have. Uh, so what we do is we contact the manufacturer. Most of ours are Siemens or GE. Uh, we just contact them. Uh, we make sure that they come in in a certain amount of time if the machines are down and uh, they'll see if a part is needed or they can repair it themselves. It's no different than a car or anything like you need to take it to mechanic that needs to be checked. It's the same exact thing. So they have prevent, preventative maintenance. So what do you do if a patient doesn't want to cooperate or if they're scared of getting an x-ray? Of course, we talk to the patient. We let them know that it's a very easy exam. It's not painful. Uh, if we do need another tech to come in and help, uh, for example, like an infant, an infant will probably be, be very scared. Uh, we do have a, a techs that are available. Uh, what we do is we put a lead shield on and we can be inside the room with the patient while we actually shoot the x-ray. 
you know, you were talking about putting a needle in their back. So Correct. if the spine has putting a needle in a patient's spine ever made them worse? Uh, since I've been in the field for six years, uh, no. But of course, we do have the patient sign some consents. We do explain the exam to them. Uh, but I haven't seen anything that has gone wrong with patient, putting the needle into the patient's back. Um, it, it is a long needle. If you see it, if it's about this long, but only about this much goes deep into the patient until it reaches the spinal cord. Um, are there any restrictions before, during, or after the radiology that you do? Um, as in, uh, will we have to make sure, like, if they're getting a, a certain exam, that they're not allergic to iodine? Uh, we, if they are, we do premedicate them. If they are pregnant, we make sure that we um, ask the patient, of course, to sign a consent if they're willing to do the exam. We do put a shield on the patient if it's not in the area of interest so that we can protect the patient as well. Um, first of all, students, I've opened up the chat. So if you have questions, feel free to go to the chat and type in your question. Um, so. Uh, in case I didn't say this, Ms. Gonzalez, these are coming straight from the students, okay? Okay. So the next student wants to know, what's the worst case patient you've ever had? Um, I would say a broken leg. Um, actually, the bones were actually sticking out of the patient's um, skin. So you can see the bone, you can see the fat inside the patient's. Uh, it was actually on the upper upper part of the leg and the femur. Um, what other protective gear would you and a patient wear during the x-ray? Um, depending on what type, I, I can show you the different kinds of shields that we have. Could you please? Yes. So this is our lead shield. Um, it's made out of 0.5 millimeters of lead equivalent um, material. It protects us uh, from the x-rays that we use uh, during any procedure that we have to be inside the room while the x-rays are being performed. And um, there's different ones that we use uh, with patients. This is a wraparound uh, shield that we use. We can wrap around the patients. There are different sizes that we can just wrap around with this Velcro. And we use this, there's different sizes that we use for, for bigger patients. Yeah, and there's also uh, lead gloves. The thyroid shield. The, like, the thyroid shield as well that we use to protect our thyroid, we wrap around our neck. And there's actually lead gloves that we use sometimes uh, as well. Those are uh, pretty heavy and kind of hard to use sometimes, but we do use them sometimes. And these are lead gloves that we use. So I'm going to ask what students are not asking just because they may not know. What, why lead? Why does everything have lead? So lead x-rays have a hard time penetrating this certain material. So um, that's why it's lead. Anything that has lead in it, the x-rays can't penetrate it compared to like it was just any other metal. So that's why we use lead. <clears throat> So our next question, and I'm going to add a little bit about a little bit to it, is: Do you enjoy your job, and what's the what's the best part of your job, and what's the worst part of your job? Um, I love my profession because I do help out patients. You know, anybody coming in, you know, they they fall in, or they have trouble swallowing. You know, we we find out what's going on, and that helps them. Uh, to get to help them get better you know people come in they fall like my hand hurts so it's like okay let's see what's going on with your bones you know maybe you have a fracture um the worst part maybe our job maybe um uh, let me think we can uh, also help the doctors diagnose uh diseases that would probably be uh very hard um uh Maybe the worst part of it, we we do work a lot, you know, throughout the holidays. Um, and, you know, hospitals never close. You know, even the imaging centers they do close, but the hospital never closes. So you're always going to be working. 
um, long hours sometimes, sometimes overtime, you know, to help with the ER. ER gets busy sometimes and you'll be there for hours and, you know, shifts. We have shift work, you know, so everyone's always, always uh, uh, there at the hospital to take x-rays. But we work together um, and we get it done as a good team, uh, the radiology department. And um, any other questions? Yeah, do you find your job easy? Um, some portions, yes, some portions, no, because um, you do have to learn a lot once you start working and there's different areas that, um, that are harder than others. Yeah, sometimes like during uh, traumas, we have to improvise in certain areas to get a good picture of a broken hip. Let's say the hip is broken and you can't move it. So we have to find different ways to, to uh, manipulate the, our machine so we can get a good image of the, the broken bone. Um, these are mostly high school and some middle school students. So what they're asking is what high school courses should one take to become a radiologist? Uh, well, a, a radiologist, that would be a doctor, but we are radiology, radiology technicians, technologists, and um, what we uh, prereqs that I believe that are needed are uh, at least college algebra, anatomy and physiology one and two. Uh, I believe you have to take a, a government course, an elective as one of the prereqs, and also they base it off your ACT scores as well. Um, English so, and composition yeah, as well. Yeah. So you brought up a really good point that a radiologist is a doctor and your radiological techs. So our students are learning about certificate programs, associate programs, bachelors, masters, doctors. Can you kind of give us a sequence of what a person might go through as starting with a certificate? program that the job they would have all the way up to a radiologist? Oh, well, let's say you can get a certificate as being a, a phlebotomist or not really, there's not really any certificates as uh, being anything with um, radiology. So the lowest level would be two years? An associate's degree, yeah. correct. Okay. And then what? Hi, everybody. I'm going to step in. My name is Mari Baltar. I am the assistant director of radiology. Um, as far as radiology, the associate's degree is what's needed for this, um, this position as a radiologic technologist. Um, even to advance and cross training into a CT or uh, MRI, you know, another modality within our department. Now, other degrees such as a bachelor's degree is not required for a rad tech position, but if you're looking into uh, some form of leadership, you know, becoming a lead tech or a supervisor, manager, maybe even a director in a, you know, in a facility, then that's where you would continue your education to obtain your bachelor's degree in health and um, medical service management. And as far as a radiologist, they follow the same process as an MD, except they do their, their specialties and residencies in, in radiology. So I hope that answers your question. It does. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, so back to more questions. Sure. Do you ever have difficult patients? And if so, how do you handle these situations? Um, well, in the ER, you get a whole variety of patients coming in dealing with certain problems, you know, either being mental or um, having taken any type of um, illegal substances. So sometimes you get those patients that are combative and you just have to just try your best to like calm them down and just uh, get the images that the doctor needs uh, so they can diagnose the patient, talk them through it, you know, um, just they can tell them that all it is is just a picture and it's just the for their own good so the doctor can help but um as in like kids and stuff sometimes you just have to just try to relax them you know help the parents uh, calm the patient down you know they they, they just they're afraid they, they think they're gonna get a shot most of the times when they come in 
and we have to just explain to them that it's just a picture. So most of the time, that's the main problem that they're just scared and they don't really know what's happening. So don't they think kids are scared? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's about it. Like we still we work together. Like if 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 there is a difficult patient, like one of us will kind of hold the patient to get the image that we need, and another one will expose to get the image. So we work together and we get the images that the doctor needs. So uh, another question is, why might a patient disagree with your diagnosis? As a, well, we don't diagnose. As a radiology tick, we do not diagnose the patient. All we do is we take the images available for the patient and the radiology uh, radiologist will actually be the one diagnosing the patient. So what we'll do is we'll just send out the report uh, with, from our medical records to their physician and their physician will, of course, diagnose the, the patient from what they see on the x-ray. So all we do is just take the image. And then of course, if the patient disagrees with the report, then the, the physician, uh, their physician can always speak to our radiologist and see if they uh, can maybe take another type of exam to di help diagnose the patient better. And then I'm gonna ask this question because I know uh, the things that I've been through so what do you do when a patient says, did you see anything? What'd you see? What'd you find? Tell me, tell me what you're finding. What do you do in those circumstances? So when we go to school, they, they, t they teach us to not tell them anything because we're not a, a doctor and we can say something and then a doctor will be say totally opposite. So it can come back to us and they, we can get in trouble for saying something that it, was, it wasn't true. So what we tell them is we just, uh, the report will be sent to the doctor. And if you have any questions, call your doctor's office and they can give you a report. So uh, yeah, as a tech, we can't say um, something's wrong with this patient because we're just the technologist. So we just take the images and we send the images to the doctor. And the doctor is the one that reads it and writes the report. So that's a very interesting point. So besides the medical related classes that you've gone through, You've had to go through training on patient care. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes, through patient care, they, you know, they teach us how to um, commu communicate with the patient, to how to treat them um, with respect and treat them um, as age specific. age specifically, like to different patients. Uh, just, uh, they teach us a bunch of stuff, how to like transfer patients, how to move a patient from a wheelchair to a bed to use uh, good body mechanics when transferring because you, you you possibly could injure yourself um but they teach us everything how to you know start an iv to place leads on patients for the hot the heart monitors you know they, they teach us a lot of different uh, areas of patient care to um take care of the patient um emotionally also because i'm sure they're scared yeah of course yes uh, we just have to be um you know conscious of, of what they're going through sometimes it's a lot harder for some patients because you know they're dealing with cancer or they're dealing with they just had a surgery and they're in a lot of pain so yeah we'd have to just every patient is different so you just have to just gauge of you know, how they're feeling and, you know, always ask questions, you know, how are they doing, you know, just taking care of them to the, our best abilities. Do you have patients that try to get out of, of doing this? Um, sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll refuse an x-ray and, and that's okay because um, we can't force an x-ray on a patient, you know, if they, if they say they don't want it, then we're not going to take the x-ray. Um, we just have to talk to the doctor and just admit so most times the nurse will come in and they'll explain to the patient that it's necessary. So usually at that point, the, the patient will be like, okay, I'll, I'll take the x-ray. But sometimes the patient just, you know, is not feeling good at that time. If they don't want it right now, and we'll come back later and uh, get the x-ray done. Um, do radiolo radiology technologists, sorry, specialize with certain machines or certain areas of the body, or does everyone do a little bit of everything? Um, with the x-ray machine, we x-ray every bone in the body that you have. So every uh, radiology te technologist knows how to x-ray every 
bone in the body. No, um, yeah, when we go to schooling, we, they, we learn everything, how to x-ray the whole body. I, I, I do know one area of specialty. I had a friend, and maybe you can talk a little bit about that. I had a friend who had a thyroid problem and she had to take a special pill and have a special kind of radiology. And then she had to be away from her family for like a few days. That might be nuclear medicine. Okay. Uh, you do have to do a, a different program for that. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be an x-ray tech to be in nuclear medicine. You can go straight into that nuclear medicine program. Oh, okay. Uh, have you ever done any mistake with machines that affected the patient's x-ray? Um, and I guess to add to that, do you always get clear pictures? As, as the everyone's body habit is, everyone's is a little smaller or bigger. So in our x-ray machine, we have certain... Um, uh, I guess exposure ex levels? Yeah. So we are able to, if let's say a picture does not penetrate through the body enough, we can always re-expose the patient. Uh, that would probably be the only, only thing to think of right now. Okay. So, so go ahead. That, no, that's the only thing that I would think of that can affect the patients. I would think it's a little easier now than it was in the past because can't you see the x-ray pretty fast on a machine rather than uh, waiting to develop the film to see if you've got a good x-ray? Yes, correct. But in the past, uh, there used to be CR, which is we would expose it on a cassette and then we would have to run that cassette through a machine and that's how we would get the images. Now everything is digital. So as soon as we expose, we see the image right away on our screen. Uh, and then before that, they would be in film, like you said, and they would have to develop that film. And let's say you expose the patient and it wasn't enough power in the x-ray machine, the, the image would be underexposed or overexposed. So yeah, back then it was a lot harder to get a, a really good uh, image compared to now where we see the image uh, instantaneously. Um, so I'm gonna change the questioning a little bit and start getting into pay. So what's the average starting pay salary for a first year? And what kind of working hours do you normally start off with and then move up to? Like a typical day. I think it depends where you work at. Uh, sometimes some techs can get um, 18 to 22 an hour as a starting pay. And it depends how many, uh, what state. Also, it also depends on the experience that you have. But yeah, as a starting tech, you'll, you'll probably be working eight hours a day, Monday through Friday, most times, sometimes during the in the morning and at night as well. Sometimes they have overnight shifts, uh, graveyard shifts from like 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Or, you know, everyone, the, we have shifts throughout the day. So some person will come in at 8, another person will come in at 11, uh, another person will come in at 2.30. It just depends. Yeah, everyone has their own set uh, schedule and it changes uh, every week or every month. And what's your typical day like? Like how many patients do you see and... Is it different in a hospital than it would be maybe in an image, like you're at the imaging center? Okay, um, yeah, the imaging center, we have about, um, we see maybe about 30 to 40 patients a day. And at the hospital, it's a lot more because you know, there's always patients at the hospital. There's constantly people coming in the ER. Um, you do have outpatients as well at the hospital. So at the hospital, you'll see in one day, we'll see over a hundred patients. Wow. A day. hundred yeah. patients a day? What is your data? And here, uh, the imaging center at Dove is for outpatients. It's an outpatient facility uh, for imaging. Uh, we are open Monday through Friday. We are here from eight to five. Uh, we are off of the weekends, off the holidays. Uh, so the outpatient, the variety is about 30 to 40 patients, including x-rays and fluoroscopy. Uh, we do have CT, MRI here. 
And we do have three ultrasounds available also in this facility. Okay. So if you have um, an imaging center and then they also do radiology at the hospital, but where else might you see uh, or could you work if you uh, got into radiology? In a doctor's office at a clinic, uh, so you don't necessarily have to be uh, in the hospital. You can work at a, so some doctor's offices do have their own equipment. So you can work uh, primarily with a physician in their clinic. And there's also mobile x-ray where there's different companies where you go to people's houses and do x-rays at their house as well. So that's the mobile x-rays? Correct. Correct, yeah. You have your own van, your own machine, and you just go throughout the whole valley taking x-rays at, at uh, you know, uh, nursing homes, at the prison, uh, anyone's house, uh, anywhere pretty much they need x-rays. Is there a lot of mobile, that seems like something fairly new, is there a lot of that um, in the valley? Uh, yes, there's very, there's a, I believe I know about 15 here in the valley available for that service. It's been a, a, been around for a while already. Do they work for a company or are they self-employed? I believe there's there, there, self. There, there's, 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 there's different companies that you work for. There's mobile, there's, I think there's called one mobile on demand. And there's a, there's a few more, but um, yeah, you work for a company and they provide you with the van and the x-ray machine and you would go uh, take x-rays. So, how and I kind of know that how long does it take per patient to do an x ray? It depends on the exam. Uh, like a fluoroscopy patient, like the upper GI that I showed you, where they drink the liquid, that can be about 15 minutes. Um, just a regular chest x ray can be about five minutes. Uh, that's including the patient changing, undressing, if there's any metal in the area, and so forth. Uh, so it varies. An x-ray can be about uh, five to 10 minutes and the fluoroscopy exam can be about 15. So we got to the end of our questions. I want to remind students, anyone who's joined us, if you have a question, I have the chat open. You can go to the chat and put your questions there. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Do good in school. Get all your prerequisites out of the way. Try to take advantage. If you're in high school or if you're in middle school, take advantage of all the prereqs that are available. English, get your government out of the way. Any algebra that you may have. Uh, you, you can pretty much sure. from high school, if you have all those prereqs already, you can go straight into the, to the program. You don't have to waste time getting pre your prereqs in college. If you have most of them done in high school, yeah, that give you college credit, you'll you get that one foot uh, in the door ready to get into the program and start working. Can you tell us what your future plans are? Are you going to do this a long time or do you have something else you'd like to do? Well, I am cross training right now um, in the beginning of cross training of CAT scan. Uh, so that'll help uh, with the imaging center just in case the CAT scan tech uh, is not available, I can go ahead and step in as a supervisor and go ahead and cross train. So uh, I'll be staying here uh, for quite a while, uh, try to learn different modalities. Yeah, same, but same, yeah. I'll eventually probably go to CT down the line uh, to, uh, so I can get that modality under my belt and uh, possibly go on ultrasound. I don't know, we'll see what the future holds for me. So when you talk about future, can you tell us a little bit about the future of radiology? And what are some things that you see coming to radiology in the, in the near future? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, sorry. Um, you were talking about the future and these are high school students. You know how technology changed so quickly. So can you tell us a little bit about things that you know that are coming to radiology in the future that students should be aware of? Not right now. Just kind of stepping 
Well, um, it's okay. I mean, new that has really, you know, come our way right now, but um, in the, in the uh, department of radiology, there's always something new. There's a specialized type of procedure. There is, you know, new kind of treatments that uh, doctors coming out of residency or doctors that have gone to a, a conference have learned about. So sometimes, you know, they'll come back and say, can we do this type of procedure? So we look into it, look into the cost, look into, you know, the equipment or software that it involves and see, you know, what type of, um, how it would help our community. And, you know, and, and that, those type of things we do on a regular basis. We're always on the cutting edge of uh, new services. That's, you know, the one uh, vision, you know, that we have here at DHR Health is to provide the services for our community here at home so that they don't have to travel to Houston, to San Antonio, to Corpus Christi to get, you know, that, that treatment and those types of procedures. That's so awesome. That's we're, we're always coming in. It, it's, I know that DHR takes very good care of the community and, and works to improve. So that's, that's a good thing to know. Um, this is a really good question. As a, a female radiologist, aside from x-rays, are there any risks involved during pregnancy? Uh, not necessarily. We do our best to shield. Uh, we uh, keep our distance, which is six feet. Uh, we follow our protocols. Uh, I, I actually was pregnant and an x-ray tech. Uh, we have dosimeters also that monitor. Uh, we can place one here, right above next to our thyroid and one down here if we are pregnant. Uh, they look like this. Uh, so monthly, they will uh, let us know uh, the radiation that we have received. Uh, so we can place it right here. And then of course, also if you are pregnant, like I said, we have a fetal dosimeter that'll see, determine the amount of radiation you have gotten monthly. And of course, we'll be keeping an eye on that. And then uh, we can know if we are exceeding the amount that we need. Are there any risks to men? Uh, no, uh, just also keeping the distance. They also get monitored, uh, but they get one, which would be here on the thyroid. Uh, they just need to keep their distance. Uh, always stay behind a lead equivalent shield during the procedures. Okay, we've caught up on our questions. Students, did you have anything else? I'm gonna open up the mics. If you're interested in asking a question in person, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. You need to be nice and loud so that she can hear and ask your question. Or you can put it in the chat. If you, if you want to ask a question that way. It looks like we've caught up. Um, I'm going to give a few more minutes if anybody wants to ask any questions. And I'm looking at all the students to see. Alondra, did you want to ask a question? I think that's it. Um, Victoria, I want to thank you for joining us today. We appreciate all the information that you provided us on radiology and answering all the students' questions. Uh, students, we want to thank you for being here and district personnel who have joined us. Um, I know that in some districts, this is finals week. So everyone, good luck with your finals and have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good luck on your finals.